As we learn more about Senator John Fetterman's battle with cl clinical depression, some of us are reminded that disclosing one's mental health issues used to be a career killer in politics. That was the case for Senator Thomas Eagleton, a Missouri Democrat and a vice presidential nominee and the vice presidential nominee in 1972. He's the one you see on the left with George McGovern celebrating their candidacy for VP and president at the Democratic National Convention. Eagleton, the public would later learn, had been hospitalized three times for depression and underwent electroshock therapy during two of the stays. Here he is addressing the public about the backlash. I've read the headlines in the morning papers, and so I know it is of, of significance, of, of far greater significance than I had originally thought. As I view myself, uh, being a healthy person, uh, I thought it was uh, satisfactory to uh, be a healthy person and run on that ticket. Eagleton left the race 18 days after the revelations about his mental health. And joining me now is former U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer, who, along with Senator Dianne Feinstein, was elected to the U.S. Senate from California in 1992. And Rick Wilson, former Republican strategist and co-founder of the Lincoln Project. Thank you both for being here. And Senator Boxer, I do want to start with you because, you know, the, the history of this is that, you know, Mr. Eagleton and Senator Eagleton wasn't the first person that had had mental health issues. He was just the first to disclose it. He was sort of forced out uh, because it was going to come out before. But, but there was this kind of idea in politics. Um, back in those days when there weren't a lot of women in politics, but the men in politics had to be a certain kind of macho, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you had Ed Muskie who had snow on his face and, you know, it was like literally snowflake tears and he was sort of driven out of politics as if he was some sort of horrible candidate for allegedly crying. You know, it, 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 things have changed, though. What do you make of the fact that now, currently, what Fetterman is going through is really evoking empathy, at least from people who aren't uh, on Fox News? <laughs> Yes. Well, it's a big change. And it, it, it's really interesting because 1972 was the year that McGovern turned on him and threw him off the ticket after saying he'd be behind him a thousand percent. I remember it because guess what? I was running for my first race ever in local government. I lost that one. It was the only one. And I think this thing had a lot to do with it. Uh, it was just god awful. And I was just so shocked when Eagleton was kicked off the ticket, particularly after McGovern said what he did. Just bringing yeah. it to 1996, and this I'll be very quick on this, but I think it's important. We had two members of the Senate, Paul Wellstone and Pete Domenici, a Republican and a Democrat, had family members with severe mental issues. They teamed up and we passed the Mental Health Parity Act, which forced the insurance companies to cover mental health just as they did physical health. And now John Fetterman just being open about this, it's it's amazing, frankly. It's yeah. good. It should, and you've you got to look at all of it, the bad and the good, okay? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and Rick, the thing about Fetterman that I, that I like, I will admit that I openly like, I like him as a candidate because he's such an everyman. You know, I mean, what percentage of, you know, men over 50 have AFib? A lot. <laughs> OK. And he kind of was like leaned into it and was like, I'm going to be honest about this. He had a, he had a stroke. He's recovering. He's honest sure. about his recovery. He's honest about his dress code, the way he dresses. He's just a regular guy. Do you think that this winds up falling into that bucket or, or, or and can he withstand or will he end up getting attacked as somebody, you know, who is who's been maybe too honest about his health issues and now this mental health piece? Or do you think that actually builds a brand that I think is already pretty strong about you know, being relatable in terms of his challenges. Yeah, I think this is a story that millions of Americans relate to and understand. I think it's a story that 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 hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Pennsylvanians relate to and understand. He had a stroke. He is now suffering from the consequences of that and and working through the physical and then the and the challenges and the depression that often follows, according to a lot of medical experts in this case. And and look, we don't have many people in, in our public lives today who are willing to say, this is what's, what I really am. They want you to see a carefully curated image. This is a guy who is for all, you know, he, warts and all, you know? He's, yeah. a, he's a guy who wears shorts in the snow. I don't love it, but he, he's, he's got his own <laughs> stuff. But his bravery, I'm a Florida guy, that, that, that thought may, horrifies <laughs> me. But his bravery in doing this was greeted by uh, a meaningful percentage, not every single one. I will be. I, I did see a few yeah. Republicans, a few MAGA types, who were like wishing him a good recovery. No snark, no whatever. But yeah. 
Our politics in this country is cruel and horrible yeah. and ugly a lot of the time. It's very high contact. It's very it's very high energy. And the fact that this guy knew that this would happen, he knew what would happen, but he told the truth about it. And you know what? I've lost friends who committed suicide, who suffered from undiagnosed depression, or who tried to ignore it or get through it over, over my almost 60 years of life now. And if one person goes, okay, Fetterman can do it. He can go out and put himself out there. He's a public figure. Yeah. He needed help. He got help. And if one person, if one person in Pennsylvania says, hey, you know what? I need help. Or if one spouse says to their, their husband or wife, hey, go out. You, you need help. Go see somebody. Fetterman did it. You can too. It's not going to kill yeah. you. But the, the depression, yeah. sure. So I think it was a bold move. I really do. And and yeah. and the reaction to it has been about, as, you know, the Fox News reaction to it is like, why is he even in the Senate? The, the, the yeah. cruelty is the point, but I yeah. think he really set a good example this week for folks. I agree. I agree. I think he's very brave, and we all wish him well. Now, on, and on another note, it, it, another thing that people really deal with in the real world, Senator, I do want to ask you about this because this is your former colleague, Dianne Feinstein, because we also know that, you know, in aging, there are lots of sort of ranges of the way that people age. Um, and some people can be exactly the same age as Dianne Feinstein or be the age of Joe Biden and be very effectual. I mean, Joe Biden's very, been very effective president. His age has not held him back at all. But in Dianne Feinstein's case, there is a sense that she may be more diminished, and it does appear that she is now going to stand down. Uh, wh what do you make of the sort of push for her to go? Um, do you think mm -hmm. it is the right thing to do for her to finish her, her, her political career? And then what do you make of the coming food fight over that seat? <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Um, first <laughs> of all, I think it's the best thing for Senator Feinstein to to take this work and this burden off her shoulders. I did that job for 24 years in the Senate, 10 years in the House, six years in local government. She has had a fantastic career, and she showed that women can do this job, even if we have personal tragedies in our life or political tragedies, like she oversaw the assassination of a very popular uh, mayor in San Francisco. She worked hard to get the assault weapons ban done for 10 years. She deserves to have a few years to relax. And I've told her yeah. for years now, Diane, it's it's wonderful afterwards. People want to hear your story. You could still be out there. So that's how I feel about it. So I think yeah. that's the right thing for her. In terms of the food fight, it will be a food fight. And yeah. I have to tell you, I had a tough one as well. And it's okay, you know, as long as everybody doesn't turn on the other person from the same party. That I don't abide by. And I told them all, they all called me, keep it straightforward on the issues, why you're the best. Yeah. So I'm excited yeah. for California. It's been a long time yeah. since we've had that. Absolutely. And we have very little time left, but I'm going to give this one to you, Rick Wilson. Uh, Kamala Harris in Europe representing the U.S., do you feel that the administration has used her enough? I feel like she is an asset that maybe they could use more. I, I think whatever the weird chemistry is between the VP's office and the rest of the White House, she is an under, uh, under an underutilized asset. And a lot of the sort of hesitation about her, like, why is she doing more, is it, it's like a self-reinforcing problem. If she was doing more, they'd be using her for more. Uh, yeah. and it just, uh, it's, a tough, it's a tough spot. It's a tough job. It's a tough job. And I would like to see more of her uh, this year. Let's see if that happens.